All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is talk about how we can make cloth tear. It's one of the few parts of the cloth engine, cloth simulation that I haven't covered yet. Uh, so if you are interested in seeing more about that, I do have some other videos about that. Uh, but this one I wanted to talk about tearing, show some examples of it uh, and dive into it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna dive in and see a couple of different examples here of cloth tearing. Um, you doing it a few different ways, a few different approaches, if you will, but let's start with the basics here. Um, I do have a plane that I have made editable. Um, it does have a decent number of segments added and I have selected some points and that will be important here in a minute. Um, once I'm ready, I can right click on my polygon object, come down here to simulation tags and choose cloth. Okay, the problem is if I hit play right now, um, get out of point mode, it's just gonna fall, okay? Uh, now, we could solve this a number of different ways, but the easiest way is to select a few points here, come into your cloth tag, come into dresser, and choose fixed points. Now, to use some a lot of these options in here in the dresser section, like fixed points, as well as initial state, you do need to have an editable object, and so convert that plane into a polygon object. And so now when I hit play, once I get out of point mode here, what we'll see is we get something pretty much like what I have with the rest of these. Okay. So that's cloth. And if you want some more details about a lot of these other settings and the surface balloon, the soft body section, I do have an other video, other videos about that. But today what we're concerned with is in the surface section, tearing. Okay. So tearing really is as simple as just turning it on. Um, what you'll notice though, is that, and I'm gonna shorten this up just a bit, um, not much is happening at this point. Nothing is really tearing. And that's because the way Cinema 4D is going to work here, and we can twirl this down to see a couple of other options, um, it's only gonna tear if it stretches past a certain amount. Um, so right now that amount is 150%. I could change that though to say something like 110%, and now we're starting to get some tearing there. Right, we can kind of see that. So the tearing's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. It's not the easiest thing to kind of art direct or get exactly the way you want, but that is something we're gonna see and go over is how we can um, try to control this as best we can because right now it's just based on this angle. Um, and then the exact shape we get is based on this tear guiding. So 45 degrees is gonna allow it to choose something a little bit random, whether it's for vertical, whether it's horizontal, kind of choose those equally. Um, and you can see, you know, that's pretty much what we get. Okay, so that's kind of interesting um, in, it, uh, in its own. But a big thing that's important with tearing is that it is based on your polygons. Um, and, you know, if we just have regular squares for our cloth here, well, then that's going to give us just kind of these pretty boring lines, these really unrealistic lines and breaks. Now, one way you can kind of fix these is by selecting your um, cloth object and putting it into a subdivision surface. So that will help round things out but that almost kind of works against what we're going for here uh, since it smooth, smooths things out. And really that's not what you get with a um, piece of cloth that is tearing. So another option is to use our, um, actually not remesh, but to just um, triangulate all these polygons. And we're gonna talk about that and see that here in a little bit um, in this next example, but just to show us how to do it, it's really as simple, selecting your polygons, choosing triangulate, and well, hitting play. And that can make a difference. You can see it, you know, it's not the end of the world, but we're starting to get some sh sharper edges, some, some pieces that aren't just straight lines um, like we were seeing before. So that's a good kind of approach here, okay? Um, I am gonna undo that though, so we can compare this uh, a little bit later on in a little bit more depth. So taking this a step further then, if you want to have a little bit more control over your tearing, aside from just this angle, because right, honestly, 120% is a bit um, short in terms of the amount of stretching we want and may require us to change these other settings here to limit it so that you know we can get some tearing that doesn't just happen right when we hit play, that's where um, something like a collider comes in where you can take a piece of geometry 
and you can right click on it, go back to your simulation tag options and choose Collider. And so what this allows us to do is have another object that we can now put in this simulation. And if we're, you know, smart with how we use it, can you um, have it help tear the cloth for us? Okay, so that's what we saw. Um, I'm going to extend my preview range again. I'm going to hit play. And kind of where I, I slice through here is where we start to get some ripping. The problem is it's still ripping everywhere that has stretched past 130%. Well, that's where this map section comes in. So what we can do is create a vertex map. All right, I've used vertex maps in a lot of different videos. They're very powerful for controlling different parts of simulation and MoGraph, you name it. Um, so it's really a map based on our geometry here that allows us to specify the strengths of something. In this case, whether or not we want it to tear or give it the ability to tear. So the way I'm gonna create this is just by right clicking on our um, geometry here, going to other tags. And I know this is a little bit off screen, but then choosing vertex map, okay? And then um, we can see everything's red. We can see our vertex map has been added here. I can come in and paint where I want this to be able to rip. And I'm gonna make this pretty large, okay? So something like that. Now, when I come back and hit play, take my collider, we know exactly where it's gonna rip, okay? Or at least we should, I think I got a little bit aggressive there, but we are able to control um, that ripping, all right, based on this map. And actually, I think what I forgot to do was drag the map in, the vertex map in there. So that's why it was ripping in other places. So I'll move that back up here, we can start again. And notice now that's exactly where it's ripping. So now we're able to kind of tear something, um, a piece of cloth in half um, and get something that hopefully looks pretty good. Once again, that's where subdivision surface can come in. That's also where triangulating our polygons can come in. And ultimately what I would end up doing is keyframing my collider kind of going through this. And I would either do that using manual keyframes um, or using, where is it, Cappuccino here, where it will actively record um, the object as I move it. And I actually haven't made a video about that, so perhaps I will in the not too distant future. But that's exactly how I would work with that. So I wanted to do a couple of comparisons here um, with tearing to show us how we can get different options, different looks, or control it. Uh, so what I want to do with this first one is compare polygons. Um, so what we get with four-sided polygons to triangles, okay? Um, and so to do that, we're actually going to use the same vertex map. So I'm going to delete the vertex map, even though it was quite similar from our previous one, duplicate this on there. So we have the same vertex map um, and just kind of show you what we'll get. So I'm going to start with this one here and make sure I also add my collider tag to it. I'm going to hit play now and run this through and try and rip it. Now, I think just like previously, I want to double check to make sure I've enabled everything like tearing, um, like using our vertex map here. So that was why we are having issues there. So can tear this, and that's essentially the end result, okay? Um, and I'm gonna compare that to our part on the left. And while this isn't the exact same, you can see how with the triangles, we do get something that does look a little bit more natural, a little bit more realistic. We don't get these kind of patches, these squares. Instead, we get more kind of diagonal lines, which, does seem to make a little bit more sense, is a little bit more realistic um, when we have a triangulated mesh. And just like I was doing with my previous one, what we can do is throw that into a subdivision surface and that can smooth things out as well if you want that extra detail, if you um, want to um, you know, have, have it look a little smoother. Sometimes that may work, other times it may not because we are starting to get that similar kind of, you know, patchiness, I guess is what I'm calling it, um, compared to what we were seeing uh, pro uh, previously without it. So 
I almost do like the result without it um, a little bit better, but you know, straight lines may be a little bit too much. So uh, there would definitely be ways to kind of smooth this result. One thing I really haven't tried, but maybe worth trying, is to then throw this into a remesh, right? And that could potentially kind of smooth things out a little bit, um, make things look a little bit more natural. It probably won't work well in a simulation. Um, I'd probably need to cache my simulation so that the remesh doesn't have to work every frame. Um, but that might be a good way to go back the quads while still preserving the same shape. So that may be worth um, looking into a bit more as well. The last thing I kind of wanted to uh, compare here is what happens when we use a smaller vertex map. So something that has a little bit more detail because with our other vertex maps, the width of them is quite large. And so where exactly this is going to break could be different, could be hard to control. Whereas something smaller like this, we're absolutely going to know exactly where this is going to break. I should also point out here that the shape does matter. So, um, you know, you could make this narrower to help better cleanly kind of tear through these. To get started with this one, very much like the others, I'm going to start by going into our cloth tag here. Make sure I check cloth tearing on and make sure I drag in our map. Now, what I haven't done in, in these previous two is adjusted the tear past amount. Okay, and this can make it a little bit easier. Um, for us to slice through, so to speak, and make our cloth tear. So I'm going to add a collider to this and kind of come through here and notice how I'm able to cut through this a lot easier, really without disturbing the cloth until, of course, I went up. So if you want to do something where, you know, the cloth doesn't go completely crazy, um, that's a good combination here is using that map, but then also lowering that amount and just to kind of take this even further let's see what happens if we try this again but like lower this to like 103 so it should just be like a little bit of stretching in fact we might even get just a little bit of that um before we even slice through it but uh it's almost like a knife going through butter you could almost say all right but just another technique for tearing something whether it's with polygons or triangles okay uh, but yeah, definitely a really interesting way of working with cloth, of making something tear. And I also want to point out that you can use um, tearing, you can use cloth with all of our forces up here. So you could have it attract until it eventually broke. So for instance, if I create an attractor, okay, increase the strength so we don't have to wait all day. In fact, why don't we just animate the strength? So that way we can start to see exactly where um, it starts going crazy so maybe that thousand will be enough but as we hit play here the strength of the attractor is going to go up and if we get it up high enough it should start to attract our cloth clearly a thousand is not enough so let's try ten thousand all right and see what we get okay nothing yet i suspect things are going to get crazy really really quickly here right i can see them kind of going towards it and well starting to get a little bit of ripping but i was hoping we would um, start tearing before that so what can we do well on our small vertex map that's already really low so on our tries one why don't we try setting that a little bit lower and maybe just giving this a little bit more time now once again a tractor may be not the best Okay, since it's going to make things go really crazy, probably quite quickly. Uh, but you could do wind, um, you could do turbulence, right? We can see that tearing now. So at what what strength is that? About six thousand or so. Let's maybe try one more. Actually, yeah. So that's the attractor. I want to try turbulence or wind uh, with this. See if we can get it to kind of tear in half really quick. So let's do uh, wind because I think you can add turbulence to a wind. And let's put the strength at 20. We can always turn that higher if we need to. Definitely looks like we need to. So let's do 200. Okay, let's do 2,000. Okay, a bit much. Do 1,000. All right. 
a little bit of tearing going on. Let's add some turbulence, some randomization to that and see what we can do. Well, we got a ge nice gentle breeze going. We've got a little bit of tearing going on, though definitely not what I was hoping for. So why don't we, in ooh, that's okay. One extra zero there and all of a sudden things start going crazy. But all right, there we go. That's kind of more what I was looking for. Starting to get there, maybe 2000. is kind of a good sweet spot then. Let me turn off the, the line so we can see the natural movement here. All right. You know, definitely wish we were getting more turbulence. Um, and so it might be worth adding a turbulence in there just to spice things up. So let's do maybe like 200. Turn off the wind. All right. So I like the what, what turbulence is doing, just kind of moving things around a bit. We can increase the scale. There we go. Maybe add a little bit of wind. Too much wind. Don't want 2,000. Maybe like. 500. We're starting to see some tearing in this cloth. Okay. And as I was doing previously, you know, animating the wind speed, animating the turbulence um, so that things start to tear a little bit more is definitely one way, you know, to approach this. So I could keep animating this up a little bit. And with uh, a luck, some luck, we will see some more tearing. Also, keep in mind here, you can come into your cloth settings and increase the stretchiness because if it's going to get past that amount, well, then we're going to tear more. So it really is a combination of multiple things here, right? Now everything's tearing like crazy. So not just the tearing, that's a great place to start, but also because we are basing it on how much things stretch, well, some of those properties in our cloth come into play as well, like stretchiness bounciness, okay, that type of stuff. All right, that will do it for this video. If you're still watching, could you do me a favor and like the video if you haven't? Leave a comment if there's anything else you would like to see me make a video of uh, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.